Yes. Okay. Melissa, Commissioner Pittman, wonderful that you're with us. So we have a quorum as far as I can tell, right, Eileen? Chair sure, Rolls are alive. Good. We will then start. Um, I don't have anything to bang. It's seven o'clock. So um, I will, uh, at this point, before we begin, because we are still um, under the governor's uh, protocol, I need to check with everyone to make sure people could hear before we call uh, us to order. So Emily, in the applicant room, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Chair Rose. Uh, <clears throat> Assistant City Manager Mike Kopp in the public comment room, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Commissioner Hoffman, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Commissioner Calloway, can you hear me? Yes, I can. City Planner Eileen Franz, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, Sarah Link, who is one of the applicants for uh, Huntington uh, Lane, can you hear me? You are muted. Yes, yes we, we can. can. <laughs> Great. Kiki Andriopoulos, who is the court reporter, can you hear me? Yes, I can, thank you. Excellent. Commissioner Burns, can you hear me? Yes, I can, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kazarian, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Pittman, can you hear me? Yes, I can, thanks, Chair Rose. And Mr. Kevin Mahoney, can you hear me? I can, thank you. Excellent. Okay, I will now ask <clears throat> Eileen Franz to please call the roll to establish a quorum. Commissioner Burns. Here. Commissioner Calloway. Here. Commissioner Garland is absent. Commissioner Hoffman. Here. Commissioner McCoy is absent. Commissioner Pittman. Here. Commissioner Snyder is absent. Commissioner Uditsky is absent. Chair Rose. Present. We Thank have you. a quorum. Thank you very much. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, City of Elmhurst Zoning and Planning Commission. We, and we also sit as a Zoning Board of Appeals. We have a quorum and our first item of business is public comment. This is uh, the time in our agenda where anyone can make uh, any public comment about a zoning issue. Uh, if you are wanting to comment on one of the zoning cases in front of us, while you're welcome to do that, I would encourage you to wait until we have that case <clears throat> in front of us and there will be time for public comment at that point. If you make a comment at this point, it will not be a part of the public record on these cases. So let me ask, uh, you have three minutes if anyone wishes to make a public comment on any general issue of zoning uh, in the city of Elmhurst. Uh, Mike, is there anyone in the public comment room who wishes to do that? No, there is not. Uh, Eileen, is there anyone um, on uh, who sent uh, an email who wishes to make a public comment? Um, no, any emails we received, we've posted to board docs for the appropriate case. I think Emily is going to check my voicemail right now. Okay, voicemail, so give us 30 seconds until she returns. There are no voicemails for public comment. Thank you very much. We will then close that uh, portion of our agenda that is public comment. The next item is a uh, receipt of written communication. Eileen, have we received any written communication that is not posted on board docs? No, everything's on board docs. Okay. Thank you very much. Then we'll move into the business section of our meeting. Uh, the first item of business is the approval of minutes of the April 20th 2021 Zoning and Planning Commission meeting. Can I have um, a motion and a second to approve these minutes? 
Commissioner Callaway moves and a second, Commissioner Pittman. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections anyone wishes to make on these minutes? No, seeing none, I will then ask Eileen Franz to please call the roll to approve the minutes. Commissioner Callaway. Yes. yes. Commissioner Pittman. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Hoffman. Yes. Chair Rose. Yes. Thank you, the minutes are approved. We'll now move to our second order of business. Uh, case number 21 ZBA 01, uh, the variation at 417 East Barclay Court. Eileen, will that be you or will that be Emily who introduces this to the commission? This one is me. Would you please introduce this? Thank you. This is case 21 ZBA 01. The application was filed March 5th, 2021. The request is a variation from the rear yard setback requirements and the applicant and owner is Dennis Kazarian. The legal notice was published April 15th, 2021. The sign was posted April 15th, 2021 and the mailing was sent out April 16th, 2021, which brings us to the public hearing this evening, May 4th, 2021. Thank you. I'll now ask the court reporter um, to please swear in anyone who will be giving public testimony. And for efficiency's sake, if you are here to testify about any of the cases that we are going to be holding uh, this evening, um, and if you want to make pu public comment or public testimony on any of those, I would ask you to be sworn in. Uh, let's, we'll swear on everybody at the same time. So, um, Kiki Andriopoulos, could you please swear in those folks? Would you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you all solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in these causes will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We do. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I will now ask the applicant for this, Mr. Kazarian, uh, if you will uh, Please give us an idea about what you're asking for. Before you do that, I want to make sure you understand that part of our uh, protocol, our procedure is all of the commissioners have read your application. They've read all the supporting material. It's also our practice that we go out and visit the site. So if you've seen strange cars driving around your house, it's probably a zoning commissioner kind of looking at your property and getting a, a feel for the neighborhood. So. But if you want to give us an idea what you are asking for, and then we will have uh, the commissioners will have a chance to ask you questions. Um, we'll then ask if there's anyone who wants to give public testimony uh, and you have a chance to respond to that. And then we'll close the public hearing on this case. So Mr. Kazarian, you are muted. Okay, can you hear me now? I can definitely hear you. Okay, thank you. So I'm asking for, uh, basically it's five feet of uh, variance in the setback. Uh, my porch that I'm um, erecting contractor, it's a 12 foot back porch off the house. And it, in the setback requirement would be for only seven feet, but I'm asking for five feet of uh, variance off the 30 feet. So I'm, I'm just I'm just seeking five feet. In, in the past, the house is a house that was built uh, during the 70s and they had a screen porch on that property that wasn't in code or wasn't uh, zoned probably back at that time. And it was, wasn't a very nice looking screen porch. So I tore down the screen porch. I tore out a uh, swimming pool that was in the the backyard and I did some, um, you know, cleaning up the yard to make it look uh, presentable to the neighborhood. And uh, now because of, of the construction or renovation I'm doing, I'd like to add a, add a porch uh, to the back for the appearance to the home and uh, for family enjoyment uh, in the area. And I chose to go to the Madison Street side for that uh, porch because that's where my yard is longer, 125 feet versus the north side 
of the property, which is, is only 108 feet because it's a cul-de-sac. And on the Madison Street side, uh, the lot line is a little bit uh, longer uh, for that uh, porch uh, variance. So that's why I'm, I'm doing it on that side also. So your lot is an irregularly shaped lot, is that correct? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, yes. It's uh, it's a 80 feet wide by 125 feet on the south side and 108 feet on the north side. So which is a little bit different compared to the others because I'm the first house at the corner, uh, what makes the lot a little bit uh, slanted uh, to one side of the yard. Right. So, um, I'm just looking at some of my my notes here. And it's basically, uh, it's just for improvement uh, to the neighbor. It won't change any architectural uh, design to the neighbor. It's, it's not a two-story home. It's uh, a single-story home that was still there I'm not adding any addition to the home, even though the variance it's, makes it a, an addition, but I'm not asking for any uh, you know, addition to the property to go up other than go out with the open porch, not a uh, enclosed porch. So other than beautifying the home architecturally uh, in the neighborhood, I'm not adding any uh, second floor or any additional uh, square footage to the property or, you know, or anything of, of such that would make the, you know, the neighborhood any different than what it currently is. And, and my neighbors in the area are all kind of looking forward to uh, a home that's constructed now because it's been kind of vacant for a while while I'm trying to renovate it. Yeah, it, we saw there were some letters from your uh, neighbors that were very supportive. So we did see that. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else you want to add? Mm, it's, all, it's all I can really think of okay. other than like, I think I mentioned that uh, I did take out the swimming pool. I did take out the, there was an old porch that was erected before it was a covered porch. I took that porch out uh, that was on the right side on the 188 foot side on the north side, I, I took that porch down. Um, that, that's all I could really add because I just, everything is in my notes that I sent. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, let me um, ask if there's any, if commissioners have any questions of Mr. Kazarian. Commissioner Burns. Yes, hey, Mr. Kazarian. Um, I'm sort of your neighbor. We live on Stratford, uh, just south of Park Manor. So I've gone by your house probably a couple thousand times in the last 27 years. Um, just checking, uh, I can see that the work is underway. So uh, do you have a plan, uh, assuming that you're approved, do you have a planned approximate date or month when you'll be complete? Well, as soon as I can, I always like to say Rome wasn't built in a day, but uh, but the city gives you one year on a uh, on a plan. So I'm hoping to finish it within the timeline that the city is giving me. Okay, thanks. Any other commissioner have any questions? Commissioner Pittman. Thanks, Chair Rose. Um, yeah, I just had a quick question. Can you remind me what the dimensions are of what you're proposing? Uh, the dimensions are 12 feet uh, in length and uh, 10 feet in uh, width. So I'm going out five extra feet on the porch. Uh, without the variance, the porch would only be seven feet long, but with the variance, it goes out an additional five feet to 12 feet. Okay. And then um, I did see the letters from, um, in our packet, there was one letter from the neighbor. Um, I'm not sure if there was anything additional, Eileen, that was posted to board docs. Um, but uh, 
Did you have any conversations with your direct neighbor at the corner of Stewart and Madison? I think they're really the only one that's the most affected. Uh, Dave, I, I know his name is Dave. I'm sorry, I can't, can't remember his wife's name. I have talked to uh, Dave and his wife and they're kind of excited about uh, the project uh, starting. Okay. And he, know, and, and he knows about uh, the porch because I guess the city sends letters to uh, all the neighbors that are affected in the area. So right. he did mention to me, oh, by the way, Dennis, we, we did get the letter and some other people further down the block on uh, Cedar had mentioned it to me. And I think some people uh, on Stewart, other people on Stewart also had mentioned to me about the project, just because I'm out and about in the area a lot, you know, they've talked to me and said, oh, I got your letter and, and I'm happy to see that, you know, progress when you start, it gets going. Right, um, and thank you. One last question, The I, I saw on Google Earth that the, um, the, the screen and porch that you talked about that was on the property that you tore down. Do you know the dimensions roughly of, of what that was? I wanna say it was at least uh, you know, I'm, I'm just guessing now, probably 10 feet, maybe 15 feet long, 12 feet wide, because it took it took that whole back of the right. property there. I could give you the exact dimensions. If, no, I, if you give me a second, I, I can look up the old, uh, look up the old plan, because I, I have the old plan. If you really want me to look at it, I could look, look it up for you. Sure, so, that'd be great. Okay, just give me a moment to get the plan out here. It's not on my new plan, so let me, if you give me a moment, I'll look at my uh, uh, old plan if I could find it for a second. The old survey was done for the property. In the meantime, I can In the meantime, tell Commissioner Burns, yes, you had a question. Yes. In, in the meantime, uh, for Commissioner Pittman's purpose, my recollection is that there was a covered area at the north end of the backyard that was very extensive, much larger than the proposed Okay. Yeah, that's what it looked like. It looked like it It almost was at least a third larger than what's currently being right. proposed. Yeah, I, I have I have it now. And unfortunately, on this plat, you know, I don't have a architectural ruler, but just to guess, it looks like it might have been at least uh, 15 feet wide by at least 12 feet uh, long. Uh, okay. The old, the old one. I'm just yeah. Just, get, just well, taking a look at the the survey, which you may have the survey in the in the docs. I think you um, you have that survey there. I don't know if you guys have it, but uh, I have the docs that was was sent to me, and I think in that docs it might have that uh, survey, the plan of survey for the original house. Got it. it yeah. Shows the uh, covered. It, it shows the pool. Uh, the enclosed uh, deck, which isn't a deck, it was a uh, it was a shed. So, but they called it a deck, but it was actually a a, a shed. Of, and then there's another shed, and then a, a patio block. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank. You. There's more green space. There's more green space now 
versus the you know the old house we didn't i didn't have that much green space so now with the, with the yard with everything out i'll have a lot more uh, green space in the backyard that would be a little more enjoyable for you sure commissioner hoffman you had a question uh yes thanks chair rose as as a relative newbie on the commission um just a point of clarification is is the reason for the variation based upon the fact that it's covered well, yes, and because it's uh, additional square feet, and I guess because of code. I mean, I'm sorry, that was probably. probably I'm going to ask Eileen to answer. Yeah, that. oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, yes, if it was just um, unroofed stairs to enter the home, there are um, exemptions for that. But because it's a covered porch, the variation is required. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna ask if there's any, um, Mike, anyone uh, in the public comment room wishes to comment on this case? No, no public comment. Okay, uh, Mr. Mahoney, do you wish to comment on this case? Seeing no. Eileen, uh, anyone on email or Emily, anyone through voicemail wishes to make, give public testimony on this case? No, not for this case. Okay. We'll then close the public hearing. It, um, uh, Mr. Kazarian, it's usually our uh, method is that we will uh, deliberate this case uh, the same evening as presented unless any commissioner wishes to um, delay this. So let me first poll the commission does anyone have an objection to deliberating this case tonight? Seeing none, we will move into deliberation right now. We're gonna be efficient here. Um, so uh, what I will need is a, a motion to approve the variation request, a motion and a second. And remember, variation is uh, has to meet the standards of one. There's something unique about uh, the property, something unique here. Two, that any uh, change in the very in uh, as a result of the variation will not change the character of the neighborhood. And three, that if the request isn't granted, the person would not have a uh, uh, full use, uh, really both from an uh, uh, economic point of view that they, or as well from uh, 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 that they would lose. Uh, Commissioner Burns, give me the language on that one again. Uh, I see it all the time that you would not. Reasonable enjoyment. Would, would lose reasonable enjoyment of the property. So, so can, can I have a motion to approve this variation and a second? Um, I'll vote. Uh, Commissioner Burns moves and Commissioner Hoffman seconds. Commissioner Burns. Thank you, Chair Rose. Uh, well, just to give the, uh, not to bury the lead, I think this satisfies all the requirements for the variance. The plight of the owner in this case, I think we've seen this in many cases before. Uh, the majority of lots in this area, uh, which was all developed in the mid 60s, uh, is perfectly rectangular. There are a few cul-de-sacs, but the, the small minority. So in this case, the shape of the lot and the requirement of how that original home was placed on the lot then impacts uh, how much rear and setback area you have and, and how much area out between the back of the house and the setback line is, which in this case is very tiny. It's very compressed. Uh, but the house had to be set that way, uh, otherwise it wouldn't be facing the street properly. Um, so I believe there's a unique circumstance there. Uh, this will not change the character of the neighborhood. Uh, the overall trend is we're seeing more of these porches, covered patios and backyards, uh, open front porches and on the fronts of houses. This is clearly the trend. So it's uh, completely in line with that. And then as far as the third st standard for the variation, uh, while the there's no removal of all economic use of the house if the 
uh, application was denied. Uh, that's true. But in ca the, uh, the aspect of the reasonable enjoyment, if you were constrained to what's permitted, you'd have uh, an absurdly tiny patio on the back, which wouldn't make sense. And then because of the unique circumstance, uh, you'd be forced into that, which I believe would be unfair. So it would prevent that reasonable enjoyment that you would otherwise be able to attain. So for those reasons, I believe it fully meets the standards. Thank you. Commissioner Hoffman. Um, well said, Commissioner Burns. Thank you. Uh, not much to add. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, obviously, the unique circumstances that Commissioner Burns alluded to in terms of the lot size. Um, I, I love the fact that uh, this is somebody who's, you know, essentially making improvements to, you know, a home that's been in the neighborhood for, for many, many years. So um, the more of that, I think, the better for the, the city at large. So. Uh, I am definitely in um, support of, uh, of this petition and will be uh, voting as such. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hoffman. And it seems clear from the staff analysis of this that one, this is a lot that's bigger than what is required in the R1 district in and of itself. Um, and that in a number of uh, the aspects of it, it actually exceeds what we require. For example, the front yard setback um, uh, the uh, minimum lot frontage, uh, lot coverage, it's only at about 28% versus 30. The ways that it does not meet that, they are, it's existing legal non-conforming. So um, I think this makes a lot of sense. So anyone else, any other commissioner want to make a comment on this? Seeing none, I would ask Eileen Franz to please call the roll and call the roll, please. Right call the question on this. Thank you. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Hoffman. Yes. Commissioner Calloway. Yes. Commissioner Pittman. Yes. Chair Rose. Yes. And I forgot to mention this is a case that the plan commission has final authority on as with the two other variations on the agenda tonight. Okay. So lucky you, Mr. Kazarian, you don't have to go through uh, city council committees or the full city council. What this means is that uh, we are not just recommending this, but we, uh, our decision on this is final. So um, so it sounds like a great project, <laughs> you know, that you're going to get more green space, your neighbors are in favor of it. Um, so we wish you all the best of luck on this one. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a great, you'll get a lot more enjoyment out of your backyard. So, okay, you are muted, but that's okay. <laughs> so, all right, good luck in your project. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to the next item of business. That's case number 21 ZBA04, variation at 350 South Lawndale. Uh, Eileen, are you taking that or is Emily? Emily has this case. Emily Egan, would you please introduce this case to us? Yes, thank you, Chair Rose. This is case 21 ZBA 04. The application was filed on March 26, 2021. The date of the legal notice of public hearing was April 15, 2021. The sign was posted April 15, 2021. And the first class mailing of notice was sent April 16, 2021. And tonight is the public hearing May 4th, 2021. This is a request for a variation from fence height requirement in a front and corner side yard to construct a five foot and 75% transparent fence. And the applicants and residents are here tonight, Michael Zeidman and Michelle Dybell, <laughs> owners and residents of the property. And as city planner Franz stated, this is a case where the Zoning and Planning Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals has final authority. I did also want to mention that a interested party uh, submitted a public comment on board docs just recently, and that is up uh, for the commission and public to see and to review. Um, I did respond to that interested party with the case information. Um, I don't know if they saw all of that previously, but that is all available on board docs now. And um, 
I, I'm not sure if we have any other public comment at this time, any other emails for this. Um, but Eileen, was there any additional items for this case? Just the one that we just received. Okay. All right. So just that one that is on board docs now. Emily, can you please operationally defined for me what just recently means? Was that within the hour? Was that within the, uh, the last four or five hours? It was submitted. Um, I can look at the exact date. Uh, a few days ago, on April 20th, 2021, but just within the last four or five hours, was it confirmed that they would like this to be part of the case record and to be posted on board docs? Okay. All right. So we did get another email about maybe 10 minutes ago into okay. the planning info email. So I didn't realize Emily did not see that. So we did get another one. So there's, um, okay. And I will, I'm going to, I'll pull that back up here in a moment and I can read it into the record when we get to the okay. um, public comment portion, if you like. We will want to do that. Right. We will want to do that. Okay. I'm going to hand it over to the applicant at this point to please, uh, as you know, uh, the three standards need to be met, or at least we will uh, look, that's what we're going to use to, make our decision if you'd like to just give us an idea what you want to do. Good evening and I'm Michael Zeidman. This is my wife, Michelle, and we thank all of you for your time and your consideration and hearing our request for this variance, which as you know, for a five foot tall fence uh, around the perimeter of our home, uh, instead of the currently allowed four foot, uh, the extra foot in height is the only variance that we're requesting. We moved to the city from the city to Elmhurst uh, three years ago. We thoroughly enjoy the community. However, we do have some safety and security concerns which have led us to this variance request. Um, we live at 350 South Lawndale at the corner of St. Charles and Lawndale Avenue. And thanks to the help we've received from Emily and Eileen, we believe we understand the special requirements of a corner property, and we have carefully considered them in our request. Um, per the plan of survey, you can see that the lot is approximately 178 feet by 50 feet with the front door facing Lawndale Avenue. Um, this slide shows that front view and what we would like to do is put a new five foot steel fence along the St. Charles side of the property, as well as the Lawndale side. Uh, there's an existing three foot fence in the backyard on the right, which we would remove and uh, replace with the steel fence. Um, and on this slide, the next slide shows the neighbor to our west on our St. Charles side, where there's an existing wood privacy fence, um, which we would replace the section running along the uh, west side of the property that's three feet high, that extends out to St. Charles Road. Uh, that is currently on our neighbor's property, and we've discussed it with them and they uh, like our idea of replacing it with the five foot um, high uh, open steel fence. We've also discussed this with our neighbor immediately to the north and directly across the street to the east. And they both have given us uh, their blessing for this. Um, this plan view shows the proposed fence, as you can see, uh, the dotted line. Um, I don't think there's too much to add other than what's up there already. Uh, and as far as the variation that we're requesting, um, I'm sure you can all see it. We'd just simply like to add 12 inches in height to what's already allowed. The fence will remain greater than 75% open. And um, as you know, the city engineer review found no line of sight issues. Our response to the 
variance questions um, are that we do have these some safety and security issue concerns uh, at our intersection. There is regular steady police activity directly across from our front door and our driveway. Um, oftentimes, many times a week, drivers are routine, seem to be routinely pulled over and ticketed, and there have been many arrests which we have watched unfold. And I will tell you that it's unsettling to have the police strobe lights flashing in our dining room, uh, especially at night. And watching people get handcuffed and arrested is a bit unnerving. And we are very grateful that the police are there and doing their job without a doubt, uh, but it certainly is hitting very close to home. Um, we don't really feel that we can leave our doors open or especially our garage door that there is so much foot traffic going through the area, which um, as I stated, people will frequently cut across the southeast corner of the property. And we have had several close call incidents where I was out in the backyard with uh, our 95 pound German Shepherd, Louie, who was on a yard leash uh, people didn't see him and they would cut across the yard and we've avoided any problems so far and we would like to keep it that way. Um, the traffic that's parked on our street seems to be very transient. There are a lot of contractors and a lot of visitors to homes on St. Charles who uh, you probably know there's no parking, so they, they use the side street uh, as well as deliveries. And it's a constant flow of uh, irregular folks. Um, we feel that a five foot fence would provide a much greater deterrent to people who don't belong on our property and also keeping our dog inside the property and we feel that keeping everybody on their respective sides of the fence would be a much better idea and it would certainly uh, cause us to feel safe, much more safe and enjoy the home and especially the yard. In addition, there is a very large, I believe about 10,000 square foot building being constructed to the south of us directly across the street and Many of the neighbors are concerned about this property as well. And we have talked with the zoning department about it. Uh, there's a picture of it on one of the following slides. And our understanding is there's gonna be a retired priest living there. And if I remember right, this structure has about 10 bedrooms and even more bathrooms. And we just have to wonder who's gonna be living there or visiting the priest and how many of these folks are really truly gonna be what we would call our neighbors uh, as opposed to transients. And this does, this may sound paranoid, but given the unrest in our society over the last year or so, and some of it fairly close to home, uh, it's another reason that we feel unsafe and that this fence would be a big help to our peace of mind. There are a few pictures of the police activity. Um, there were five incidents the week of March 16th um, and, in a seven day period. And that's not uncommon. And these are just incidents that we caught while we were at home. And that is our driveway. And this is a very typical uh, location for the police to pull people over. And again, we're glad they're doing it, but um, we just, you know, we, we wonder what would happen if one of the people that they're trying to arrest tried to make a run for it. Um, and we would like to avoid a situation where they end up on our property or trying to go in our garage if I make the mistake of leaving it open, which I have done. Again, we believe this five foot fence would be a much greater deterrent, uh, would certainly more, be more difficult to scale and 
Also for our dog, it would definitely keep Louie inside the fence. Um, the picture on the left is just one example of the many vehicles that park at the foot of our driveway daily. Most of the time, they're not the same vehicles. They're transient folks, uh, them delivery people, construction people, visitors. Um, we don't know them. The picture on the right is of the uh, building under construction to the south, and uh, that causes us concern as well. Um, regarding question number two, that the variation will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood, uh, there are many similar metal fence installations in the neighborhood of this height or higher. Uh, the picture on the left shows the backyard directly across the street from us with a five foot metal fence. The picture on the right shows a six foot metal fence. Um, and we have looked around the neighborhood very carefully and we are very confident that what we would like to install will fit in to the neighborhood and what is here already. Um, this shows uh, an installation of what our fence or would be very similar to the fence that we would like to install. Um, this fence is on uh, St. Charles and Mitchell. As you can see, it's five feet four overall height, um, although we would not be installing a berm. Um, so in that respect, our fence would be different. Uh, regarding the variance question number three, that the property cannot yield reasonable return or enjoyment, given the reasons that we presented, um, we don't feel safe in our home and especially in our yard. And for us, a four foot fence would not feel adequate. Uh, we do feel that a five foot fence is reasonable and justified. And it would be, again, I'm re reiterating, open. So there would be no line of sight issues. Um, given the steady amount of police activity we see and the vehicle and pedestrian activity, it would be very helpful to our state of mind. Um, overall, in our opinion, safety would be increased for us and the general public. And this is concludes our presentation. And thank you very much for your consideration. Um, the few slides that follow are just pictures along St. Charles Road in York, examples of what we will not do. And that is obstruct the view. So again, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Emily, will you take down the presentation, please? Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, I want to open this up for questions from commissioners. Uh, is there anyone who has a question? Um, I have one question for Eileen. There, the petitioner indicated that there is a dormitory being built on St. Charles. Could you please clarify that for us? Yes, it is. Um, in, in speaking with um, a representative of the owner of the property, it is a home for the retired Bishop of St. Thomas Ciro Malabar Church. Um, it, it's the diocese that owns that property and the bishop is retiring and will be moving into the home. I believe the bishop currently lives in the home to the south. Um, and so the bishop who is taking over for him will be moving into the existing home that the diocese owns south of the home that is under construction. Um, we did talk to a representative from the diocese the home is large. It does have several bedrooms and several bathrooms, but it is a single, it is being constructed as a single family home. Thank you. So just to clarify, there is no dormitory being built. It's a single, it's a large single family home. So, okay. Just wanted to clarify that. 
other, any questions from commissioners? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to uh, ask a, for public testimony. Uh, Mike, is there anyone in the public comment room who wishes to give public testimony on this case? Yes, we have one person who wants to speak in public comment. Okay, will you please give us your name? Yeah, my name is Phil Boria. I live on Lawndale. Okay. I just I just want to be sure that uh, visually we're okay still making left-hand turns from Lawndale on to St. Charles. Okay. I want to be sure that uh, when I pull up to that intersection and the zillions of school kids who pass by every day, uh, that's not going to cause a problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. As you know, city engineers will review all of this before anything uh, occurs. So, um, Eileen, do you want to read for me, please, the uh, emails that we received? You said about 10, 15 minutes ago an email was received. Do you want to read that and put that into the public record? Yes. Um, it came in at 7.38 p.m. It's addressed to Emily um, from Dan Dixon, who lives at 297 South Lawndale. Thank you for getting back to me today. Unfortunately, I'm working and won't be able to make the meeting. I would like to convey that I would be opposed to a five foot fence that was in the front yard setback for that lot because it would create a dangerous situation at that intersection. I think it would obstruct vision of pedestrians and auto traffic in the sidewalk and street. Automobiles traveling south on Lawndale would have a difficult time seeing school children going to and from school as well as traffic coming from the west on St. Charles. Frequently there are children on bicycles pedaling on that sidewalk and they don't stop and look before they cross Lawndale. A five foot fence there would make it more difficult for drivers to see them. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is there any other emails we have not had uh, on there or voicemails uh, or those who wish to make public comment? Emily is checking. There are no voice notes, Jeros. Thank you. Okay, um, at this point, after the public testimony, it sounds like there's no more public testimony. The applicant, I wanna give the applicant a chance to respond to any of the concerns that were raised in public comment uh, or from uh, any emails. If they would like to respond, you don't have to, but you are certainly welcome to respond to any of those comments or concerns. I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, this fence would be greater than 75% open, as you know, and uh, that would not obstruct the view of anybody or any child or any pet. Um, and so I believe that we've addressed that concern already. Uh, and I would also like to point out that there are many, many intersections, uh, several of them within one block of me where the view is obstructed by either solid fences or uh, shrubbery. So I feel very strongly that uh, this is not the case in our request and we would appreciate greatly this variance. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to, thanks Michael. I'd like to add as well uh, that we have the benefit of the uh, engineer who took a look at this and said that uh, his review showed that there were no line of sight issues. So that helped us feel comfortable that we weren't putting anyone in the community at risk and that this would allow uh, safe installation. Okay, thank you very much. All right, seeing no other um, comments, uh, I would like to then close the public hearing for this case. Um, we would, uh, let me first then poll the commission and ask if there's anyone who does not wish to deliberate this evening. 
All right, seeing none. Uh, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the variance and a second. Commissioner Calloway moves and is there a second? Commissioner Pittman seconds. All right, Commissioner Calloway, um, let me let you lead the discussion. You are muted. <laughs> Thank you, gosh. Um, Someone called that a rookie mistake today. <laughs> yeah, you can't really call it that anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. um, so, you know, obviously the, the three variations, um, and I, I do appreciate the applicants uh, PowerPoint presentation and, and uh, the organization I thought I thought it was very well done um, and addressed you know point by point a lot of the required standards and uh, was very organized so thank you for that um, I you know I do think here the plight of the owner is is due to unique circumstances um, there you know lots of examples were given but you know there's there's not a lot of cases like this. I think a lot of the houses that we see on corners and, and looking specifically on St. Charles, you know, the house is butting up uh, closer to the road, in which case that that green space uh, that the applicants have isn't really useful space. I mean, there's there's just not enough of it. And, and in this particular case, they have this huge green space that's frankly the, you know, there's there's some yard on the north side of the house, but I think that the mostly the usable yard and certainly when you have a, a large dog like a German Shepherd, you know, the, the best place to put that dog I have to think is going to be on the south side of the property. So, um, you know, I think that's sort of the way that that lot is situated. It's, it's very unique. Uh, you know, the issue with heavy traffic, um, you know, my kids are went to Sandburg, so I get, you know, cutting across lawns and um, and and certainly, you know, I can see that that's a concern, especially if you do have a dog and people come up in the dark or, you know, they're not prepared to see that. Um, I, yeah, I wasn't too swayed by the um, building that's going up across the street. I don't know that that really is, is really all that relevant to, you know, wanting a, a fence that's more than 75% opaque. So, um, but I thought some of the arguments here, you know, were were quite relevant. I think B, the the variation of granted will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Um, you know, we do see some some higher fences, uh, and and again, given the uniqueness of how this lot this lot is situated, I think it it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, the fact that it's more than seventy five percent opaque, it's nicely done. Um, you know, using uh, the materials that the applicant is is talking about using, uh, I, I think it it really does fit in um, with with the neighborhood. You know, I, I know there's been some concerns by some of, uh, particularly one of the emails that was received that you know it'll it'll be dangerous and you can't see around it. Um, I, I wasn't particularly swayed by that because uh, I think the fence being more than seventy five percent opaque, I think you. You know, it doesn't present that kind of a concern. Um, some of the examples given, I think, where you have those very, those arborvitae that are very dense, um, I think probably there's a greater argument, you know, using that kind of foliage where it's it's more difficult to see around the corner there. So um, so I, I do think, you know, the, the manner of the fence going up the material, um, I think it's consistent with the character of the neighborhood. And then lastly, the property in question cannot yield a reasonable return or provide the owner or tenants a reasonable enjoyment of the property if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations in its zone. Um, I, you know, I think I, I sufficiently covered this kind of answering the, the first uh, variation standard, but um, again, that's a, that's a rather large yacht, rather large um, piece of green space. And when you can't use it for a dog, for various reasons, um, I think that's that's very limiting, um, and and I think you know the safety and security issues certainly that the applicant raised are um, satisfy that particular standard as well. Thank you very much, 
Commissioner Pittman. Thank you, Chair Rose. Um, I guess um, I, I'm a little on the fence <laughs> about the fence. Um, I, I do think that there are some unique circumstances surrounding um, this home, but I do think some of the things um, are temporary. I suspect a lot of cars are parking because of the construction of the house across the street, which will at some point um, be less. Um, the police situation, um, I mean, that obviously, if, if I had that in front of my house all the time, um, would give me, you know, cause for concern, and I, I certainly would um, opt to put a fence up. Um, I don't think it will um, necessarily um, change the character of the neighborhood. Obviously, there's some people that are against it in the neighborhood. Um, there's nobody who provided support for it in the neighborhood. Um, you know, the last one is the one that I'm, I'm struggling with is, is will a four foot fence provide what they need or is really a five foot fence, um, something that they should have given these unique circumstances. Um, I guess I'd like to hear from some of the other commissioners, um, before I make my final decision. Thank you, Commissioner Pittman. Uh, any other commissioner have any comments they'd like to make or questions? Um, Commissioner Burns? Sure. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, Commissioner Kiawe's presentation, and, and I also see the points Commissioner Pittman made. Um, you know, when you get into these uh, what's issues where you're looking at four feet versus five feet, is it really uh, a significant uh, disadvantage to have four feet instead of five? However, I think well, we've seen some other presentations, or maybe there's some coming up on later agendas, I can't remember, where uh, four feet versus five feet really makes a difference as to whether uh, animals can get across it or even uh, humans. Uh, I can't jump as high as I used to, but I think uh, five feet would be a pretty uh, difficult uh, uh, salt uh, jump to make. So. Uh, one thing I wanted to clarify too is with the St. Thomas Cyril Malabar Parish, uh, I actually know a few people who've been associated with that. Uh, many years ago, I worked for the Archdiocese of Chicago, uh, just, just as an employee. But um, And what I'm thinking of is the Cardinal's House on uh, State Parkway in Chicago. And the, the main resident is the Cardinal Archbishop of Chicago, but they have a number of bedrooms, great big house. Maybe many of you have seen it. It's like 25 chimneys, I think. Um, they use the house for uh, temporary housing for priests coming from other parishes, from other areas of the country passing through. And I did notice the house. I was out there earlier today, uh, the house being built on the south side of St. Charles, and it is pretty massive. Uh, even accounting for the garage, there's a three-car garage where the entries are actually not facing the street, but out there on the other on the south side of the house. Uh, it's going to be about an 8,000-foot house. Uh, so I would assume that they're planning that they would have some uh, visiting priests or uh, clergy who might stay there for various amounts of time. Uh, of course, they, they have to be the, whatever our limit is for the number of unrelated people in a house. However, I don't think the, the applicant has to worry about uh, these people causing a problem for them. Um, as far as the neighbors' comments, the uh, neighbors who were opposed, I th think that they assumed that this would be a solid fence, uh, and it's not. If it was a solid fence, their objections would be very germane. Uh, but since it's going to be one of these uh, sort of metal picket uh, fences, like the, what we call wrought iron, whether it's actually wrought iron or not, uh, it's very easy to see through. And since the city engineer has already opined, that it would not cause line of sight problems, then uh, uh, I think all those uh, issues raised by the objectors are uh, obviated, uh, they go away. So um, overall, I think I would be at least 50% plus one in favor of this application. Anyone else wanna make any comments? Um, I, I will. Um, I, I want to say to the petitioner that Elmhurst is a very safe community, and I understand you've only been here for three years, and it would be my 
real hope that you come to understand this as a safe community as well. And it's, it's a little disturbing to me that, um, uh, that you have such a sense of unrest as a result of it. I wanna say this, first of all, I, I will support this. Um, I will, I certainly think it is not, um, I think it's in keeping with the community. I think if you have that strong sense of unrest, whether that's objectively true or not, that you will not be, you will not have a sense of safety unless you have this extra foot. So I, I certainly believe you have met the first two. Unlike Commissioner Calloway, I am um, pretty much uh, unmoved by your arguments that the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. I live actually at North Avenue in Berteau, um, less than half a mile from uh, interstate. Um, I have their significant police activity occurs uh, by me, uh, especially once when the hospital was there every Friday and Saturday night, there certainly was a lot of that activity. Um, I, I, I'm concerned by this, the terminology you keep using about transients. This is not a transient community. This is a pretty stable community. Um, and, and it would be my hope that you would come to realize that whether you get this variation or not. I wanna say again that I support this variation. Um, I, I believe you know, you've met the remaining two. It, it's my determination. I think Commissioner Calloway made a fairly good argument about the uniqueness of the situation having to do with the land itself. And that's really, uh, I, I am more, uh, her arguments uh, really uh, persuaded me that uh, I could go along with that. So I, I support this, um, but I, um, uh, it, it's my hope that you feel much safer in this community because it is a very safe community. So I will support it. Anyone else wish to make a comment? Any commissioner, Commissioner Calloway. Um, Chair Rose, I just want to second your your comments, um, and and I'm I'm glad you made those. I, I think those were important things to be said and heard. So thank you for that. Okay. All right. Any other discussion on this? All right. Then I will ask Eileen to please call the roll uh, on the question. Thank you, Commissioner Calloway. Yes. Commissioner Pittman. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Hoffman. Yes. Chair Rose. Yes. All right. Good luck to you. The fence you're going to put up looks really lovely. I think it. Uh, I think it looks very nice. Uh, I love wrought iron fences. I think it's a great idea, and so I hope that um, it gets up again. You do not. You will not have to go through city council committee or the full city council. We are the final decision makers on this. So I wish you good luck and I hope your fence gets up soon for you. Thank you very Thank much you. to all of you. And I would just like to say, we do feel safe in Elmhurst. We feel very comfortable here and we're just not used to this level of police activity. But thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for That's one of the things that makes it a safe community, I guess. I don't know. You're, I'm sure you're right. Thank All you. Right. Thank Good luck you very you. much. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will move to the third case. Um, I'm going to ask Eileen, is it you or Emily is taking this case, the one? Um, Emily has this one. this one. Emily. All right. Can you please introduce this case to us? Uh, I will. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to. And I'll follow yeah. over tomorrow. We'll go. Okay. Right, you just send us an email. I and will. Oh, yes. What we need to do next. So yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good evening. You too. All right. This is case ZBA 21, sorry, let me start over, <laughs> case 21 ZBA 05, rather. The application was filed on March 16th, 2021. The notice of public hearing was April 15th, 2021. 
The posting of the sign was April 15, 2021. The first class mailing of notice was April 16, 2021. Tonight is the public hearing, May 4th, 2021. And the request is for a variation from front yard requirements from 30 feet to 26.5 feet uh, for a variation of 12%, which would mean again, that this is a case where the Zoning Planning Commission Zoning Board of Appeals has final authority. And the applicant is Rich Barnes. He's the architect of record. Um, we have here tonight on virtual uh, Zoom, the property owners, Sarah Link. So who will be speaking about it? The architect or the property owners? Uh, the property owners. Okay, all right. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. Mr. and Ms. Link, um, why don't you give us an idea what it is you're planning? Again, we've all read the stuff and you've uh, probably noticed some folks uh, uh, driving by uh, your property. It's so you probably don't see that many cars come by, but you may have seen some of us commissioners there in the last day or two. So just give us an idea. <laughs> We, we we live on Huntington, right? So we get all the traffic from Sandburg and uh, Edison. So yeah, we give us some, couldn't tell the difference. There you go. Give us uh, some idea of what you got in mind. So the we have a current porch, and it's a small, just kind of entryway porch, maybe about seven foot square, and uh, you can barely fit one chair on there. And so we're just hoping to extend the porch across the entire uh, front of the kind of southern half of the building. Um, the, the house is uh, kind of offset where the northern half uh, protrudes about seven feet from the southern half. The current porch and the entire northern half is um, already uh, about four feet, uh, you know, in violation of that setback. Um, there's really no other place to put uh, the porch. In fact, uh, extending the porch further uh, to the south we actually approach, you know, uh, meeting the 30 foot setback. Um, the, you know, with the porch that we're proposing, we'll, st we'll still be well behind our Southern neighbor's garage. Uh, and I believe, you know, they're, they're within their setback as well. Um, you know, the, the house was built in the fifties. So I, I'm thinking, you know, the variances have changed since then. <laughs> Um, I don't, you know, this, the whole project is part of a, a total facelift for the house. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we're hoping that, uh, you know, it'll uh, kind of improve the value of the house, improve the neighborhood. Uh, we have a couple of neighbors that we've discussed the project with, and they're on board, including the one directly south to us, um, you know, adjacent to the porch and uh, directly across the street from us. I don't I think that's all I have to say about it. I'm not <laughs> hey, Link, do you have anything to say? For you, so <laughs> what was that? Uh, Ms. Link, do you have anything to say? Sarah Link. I was just going to add, um, just for our personal value of it, we have a number of, um, we have three children, a number of small children on the block that like to play out front, hang out out front, you know, neighbors that like to gather and socialize. So this would not only improve for us, but also to bring the neighborhood together. Right, and, and, and when we have those gatherings, it's generally, you know, she might be the only one sitting in a chair on the porch and everybody else is just kind of standing around on the front lawn because there's really nowhere else to go. Got it, right, gotcha. Okay, great. Community porch. <laughs> the community porch, I, I kind of like it. So um, let me ask then any uh, questions from the commission about their applications. Anyone have any questions for them? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna ask about uh, public comment. Anyone wish to make public comment, Mike, in the public comment room? No, there is not. Eileen, have you received any public comment over email? No, I have not. Okay, uh, I know that Emily is checking voicemail just to make sure. Why so? There, there are no public comments on voicemail. Alrighty. Uh, we will then, at this point, close the public hearing. 
Um, and again, you've seen this twice now. Uh, we will uh, move towards deliberation unless there is any commissioner who uh, wishes to delay the deliberation for any reason. Okay, seeing none, then I will entertain a motion to approve the variance and a second. Commissioner Pittman moves and a second. Commissioner Calloway seconds. All right, Commissioner Pittman, can you lead the discussion on this? Thanks, Chair Rose. Um, I, I definitely support this. I mean, it falls in line with a lot of the front porches that we've seen come through. Regarding the standards, um, the plight of the owner due to unique circumstances, um, they pointed out in their application um, that their lot is slightly irregular, um, which I think obviously affects that sort of pinch point that they discuss if they did follow um, along with what the current zoning is. You have a house that was built in the 50s. Um, they have, uh, you know, exceed the setback in the backyard considerably. If the builder had pushed that house back when they built it, there would have been plenty of room to build the front porch. Um, they um, will definitely not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. If anything, it'll be much improved. Um, I think it will be a welcome addition to that house and to the block itself. Um, the property in question cannot yield a reasonable return. I mean, we've you know discussed this one um, as well at length. I, I think that it's reasonable to want to put the porch on and enjoy that. Um, and given the constraints of the um, existing older construction and newer zoning requirements, um, they can't do so without this. So I am in support of it. Great, thank you, Commissioner Calloway. Well, it's a porch and we like porches. So there's that. I love them. <laughs> um, no, I think Commissioner Pittman did a really nice job of explaining this. I mean, I, I think the design and obviously, um, you know, Mr. Barnes always does a really nice job with his um, his designs, but I, I, I would agree. I mean, this is really will be a nice addition to the house. I think um, I'm not going to go through the criteria because uh, Commissioner Pittman did that extensively, but um, you know, this, this house is on a path uh, where you do have a lot of traffic coming from Sandburg and I get it, you know, when you want to have um, kind of a focal point or, you know, a place where people can gather. Um, I think that's, that'll be a nice feature. So uh, I, I would be in favor of this. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other commissioner wish to make any comments? Uh, Commissioner Hoffman. Just a quick comment. Uh, being a lifelong Elmhurst resident, I love to see um, these homes be refinished, repurposed like you're doing. I think it's beautiful. I think this is definitely going to uh, enhance the overall look in the community and probably lead to similar type of requests down the road from others. So um, well done and I'll be in support of this. Great. Anyone else want to make a comment? Commissioner Burns. Just briefly and sort of in the spirit of Commissioner Hoffman's comment, it, I like to see this uh, trend that's been going on for some years now of more front porches, which uh, brings neighbors out uh, to see each other instead of huddling in their backyards. Um, when we moved on to uh, Stratford Avenue 27 years ago, uh, you know, you'd see people out doing yard work, but no, there were hardly any front porches other than stoops. And uh, I just think this is a good trend. And I also agree, you know, the up, doing upgrades to your property, uh, it's a very good sign for Elmhurst. So that's all, thanks. Great, thank you very much. You know, I think there actually is a lot of community-based research that indicates that if people are seen in their community and front yards, and this is one of the reasons I love front porches, that's a safe community. It's, it's not just a friendly community, it's a safe community because people are, Kind of out and looking for out for things, and in relation to the first um, uh, criteria, I mean, you've got, you see Huntington kind of curves around, and that you got a lot of odd-looking lots for that reason because of the, the curve of the street of Huntington. That was very 50s to create these nice little curved streets. So uh, that's what we have, and I I think the petitioner also made a point that um, it, it really the kinds of renovations they're doing uh, really at the price point of this uh, home that a porch, a lot of people would love and expect a porch. So I, 
I'm totally in favor of this and uh, uh, appreciate what you're doing to upgrade your property and upgrading your property upgrades the whole community. So I think it's a great idea. So seeing no other comments, um, I will uh, ask Eileen to please uh, call the roll on the question. I apologize. Was there a motion in a second? Yes. Commissioner okay. Pittman uh, made the motion and Commissioner Calloway seconded. Thank you. Commissioner Pittman. Yes. Commissioner Calloway. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Hoffman. Yes. Chair Rose. Yes. Motion passes. Good luck to you. Again, we are the final decision makers on this one and hope to get your porch done before uh, too much uh, the summer weather really uh, comes in and you can really use it. So okay. thank you. Looks great. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will move uh, to the next item of business, uh, which is uh, the amended conditional use permit for a planned unit development. I'm going to ask Eileen, are you the one who is uh, introducing this? Yes, I have this one. Could you please introduce this to us? Thank you. This is case 21 P06. Um, the applicant reached out to us in early April about amending the original um, conditional use permit for a planned unit development that was approved earlier this year. So the, the applicant is Kevin Mahoney of Malto Properties. He's the development manager. The owner is um, RREEF CPIF 635 West Lake Street LLC. Michael Nigro is managing director and authorized signatory. Um, as you'll recall, this case was approved earlier this year for two industrial buildings at the former Caterpillar site. Originally, the applicants were proposing um, industrial buildings with ceiling heights of 32 feet clear. Shortly after the case was approved, um, it was decided that they would prefer to construct buildings that are at a height of 36 feet clear ceilings. Um, so the plan development ordinance does allow for some modifications that can be approved um, through just a staff review. Building height, regardless of whether it meets the height requirements or not, is specifically called out as something that cannot be a minor change to a plan development. So the applicant um, submitted this amended conditional use permit for a plan development. Um, we sent out the previous Zoning and Planning Commission report to all of you earlier this evening. If you want to take a look at the criteria and how the responses were answered for the previous case. And Kevin Mahoney is on the call this evening if you have any um, for, for him to make his presentation. Uh, thank you, Eileen. I, I just want to go ahead. I'm sorry, I skipped. The legal notice was published April 15th. The sign was posted April 15th and the mailing was sent out April 16th. And the applicant did go before, go before the Development Planning and Zoning Committee again and hold another neighborhood meeting. Um, I just want to clarify, this is the only change that's being made. Is that correct? Correct. Um, the applicant, they have actually applied for their building permit already and have begun doing some of the site work at the property because they were granted the approval of the um, original request. So if for some reason this is not approved, they would still proceed with the original proposal with the buildings at 32 feet. Okay. Uh, I have another question and um, I'm the lawyer, uh, but I, I know we have one here. So can we stipulate whatever that means, and maybe Commissioner Calloway will give me some language to say here that uh, the conditions were met uh, for the conditional use and we would agree with all of those. Uh, can we do that or do we need to go through each one of those? I 
I mean, I think it's okay for you to reference the previous case unless you want to make changes to the responses from the criteria previously. Okay. All right. Um, I let me uh, then ask um, Mr. Mahoney uh, if he would like to just give us an idea about this modification. I mean, I, I will go on record as saying I, I understand the purpose of not having city staff agree to building heights. I don't agree to it in the, I, I in this instance, this is so minor in relation to this, but I understand that that is not uh, what our zoning code indicates. So I like Mr. Mahoney to talk about why you need this extra four feet. Great, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, I was joking at our DBZ pre-meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had so much fun going through the PUD process the first time that uh, we decided to go through it again. Um, but in all seriousness, I uh, appreciate um, everybody's time tonight, consideration as we uh, are requesting this amendment to that previously approved PUD. Um, as I mentioned, this amendment will increase the clear height in both of these buildings from uh, 32 to 36 clear. Uh, no other modifications or requesting additional clear height is within the allowable building height uh, per ordinance. And uh, our PUD will again contain no requests for uh, relief. Let me share just one slide that I think might be beneficial to this. To type for a second. Actually, you know what? Sorry, I mean, I think um, screen sharing is. Yeah, he, you don't have the. Try, try one more time. I just enabled it. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm still blocked out. That's all right. It, it was just one slide. Um, no worries, we can't pull it up. Uh, so given the limited scope of the requested amendments, uh, I'll keep my remarks tonight pretty, pretty brief, but I do think it's important to provide a little bit of context for uh, this change. And so, as we were going through that uh, initial PUD process, we were also getting further into the design and engineering uh, of this project. Uh, we sat down, uh, spent quite a bit of time thinking about, you know, what are the building specs, um, you know, that were incorporating this project, uh, really wanted to explore ways that we can make this a better project. Uh, this is long-term investment into Elmhurst. And so um, it was a worthwhile exercise. And the one area that we really focused on was, was the clear height of these buildings. Um, a trend that you're seeing uh, definitely in Elmhurst, and we're certainly seeing it nationally, is that uh, industrial buildings, they're, they're getting taller. Um, it's a trend that's been occurring for, for quite some time, and it's largely being driven by tenants themselves. Uh, companies are becoming more efficient with how they utilize their space, and a big portion of that uh, is taking advantage of that vertical space within these buildings. And so it's a trend that we uh, see continuing. Um, we believe that the added cost to increase the clear height in both of these buildings, uh, it is a worthwhile investment today because ultimately it's gonna create buildings that are, are more marketable uh, into the future. Um, another change that we are incorporating uh, into the project is not really relevant to the PUD approval, but I think it's worth noting uh, for this discussion. Uh, we are gonna be incorporating LEED into this project. So um, both of the buildings will be uh, LEED certified um, just a few closing uh, remarks. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, and, and as I said in the staff memo, um, this change in building height, it's not gonna impact any aspects uh, of the previously approved, approved site layout. Um, it's not gonna materially impact the appearance of these buildings. It's not gonna change the types of tenants that we're gonna be attracting uh, to this project, but it is gonna make these buildings, uh, as I mentioned, more functional, more marketable. Uh, overall, we think it's gonna create uh, a better project. and so. Uh, we think that's a positive thing for Elmhurst and, and we think it is going to help the city uh, continue to attract and retain uh, good corporate tenants both now, but really uh, these changes are, are for the future uh, for these buildings. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions from the commission. Okay, any questions from commissioners? Okay, seeing none. Uh, I will then close this public hearing. Uh, oh, well, no, I cannot close it before yet. I need you to check email and voicemail to make sure. No emails. No 
No voicemails. Heroes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can I then have an motion, a, a motion to approve the conditional use, this modified conditional use? Commissioner Burns, and a second. Commissioner Pittman. Okay. Commissioner Burns. Thank you, Chair Rose. Uh, I believe I uh, went through the conditional use and special uh, use the standards for the original sure. case. You did. And I reviewed them this afternoon. Uh, I want to thank uh, Emily for sending that along. So obviously, well, what we concluded back then, I believe, was very sound and well based, rationally based, and I would still hold to those uh, conclusions. The only change here is 32 foot clear ceiling height to 36 feet clear ceiling height. And for the non real estate people, I know Commissioner Pittman knows this lingo, but clear ceiling height is your interior uh, up to the beams. You know, if you have st like steel web joists or whatever, uh, how much can you stack? Can you store inside? So they're increasing the volume. In this case, gives me an opportunity to, uh, I think every few years I trot this quote out from Cass Gilbert, who was an architect in New York City around 1900, who said, a skyscraper is a machine that makes the land pay. The higher up you go, the more each square foot of land uh, produces economically because it's carrying more and more uh, valuable. So 36 feet versus 32 feet, just makes it more marketable. Uh, you're actually seeing buildings going over 40 feet in some uh, very high uh, land value areas because they need to make that land pay. In this case, I don't see that generating any more significant em employee count or uh, higher truck traffic. Uh, you're just gonna have an opportunity to uh, get better tenants because you have more volume, more cubic volume perhaps the rents could be better, make it a better uh, return for the investors in this project. Uh, so I would be in favor of approving this uh, amendment. Okay, Commissioner Pittman. Thank you, Chair Rose. Um, I agree <coughs> with Commissioner Burns. I think the, the additional four feet doesn't affect any of the addition doesn't affect any of the initial um, things that we reviewed regarding this project um, to his point it just makes the property more valuable which attracts better tenants which at the end of the day is better for Elmhurst so I think that um, you know it's it's a it, it's a you know small ask they're not going from 32 to, to 42 um, it's it's four additional feet and and I don't see any issues with that. Thank you. I'd also like to say that it's it's still within the range of what's allowable, which is um, I think that's an important piece. Uh, I too went back and I reviewed the report <coughs> and I I see I see nothing really that would change my mind with that except to say to Mr. Honey G, next time I hope you. Uh, uh, Cause don't cause yourself as much pain by having to go through this again. That we're able to make that estimate at that point. So I would absolutely support this uh, as well. <coughs> uh, any other comments from any other commissioner? Seeing none, I will ask Eileen to please call the roll on the motion. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Pittman. Yes. Commissioner Callaway. Yes. <coughs> You're, I can't hear you. I can't hear. We can't hear you. Commissioner Hoffman. Oh, there. You yes. Go. Chair Rose. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Good luck. Great. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. We're excited to see it happen. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. Thank you. Okay. Next order of business is other business. Is there any other business anyone has or Eileen that you would have for us? 
Um, one thing I just wanted to comment on first is we did have the request for Yorkies on the agenda this evening. Uh, the applicant made a few changes to the site plan, but uh, maybe making some other changes. So we're just requesting that that case be continued, I think, to our first meeting in June um, at this point, because May 18th we have um, the deliberation for Roberto's and possibly the final PUD for Riverside Drive. Right. I'm sorry. I failed to mention that. I mean, I think this is wise practice. The petitioner really was was not was still not ready with that. So that's a complicated case. So uh, until they really have their plan set and they are ready. So even if Eileen, for some reason, they they're still kind of working on what are we going to do here? What are the I really let's just advise them to wait until they know what it is that they're going to do. So. I think that makes a whole lot of sense. Solves everybody's issues, so. Okay, uh, any other business? All right, May 18th, we will be doing the deliberation on Roberto's. I wanna uh, caution everyone, and this is the uh, preaching for the preacher here myself, which is, um, this is a case that's garnered lots of public interest in common, and it is, comment and it is our responsibility to not discuss this case outside of these public meetings so that everyone has the advantage of hearing that. So um, neighbors may wanna talk to you about it, all kinds of people. I've been, a number of people have commented about it, but really it's just fair to both the petitioner and to uh, those people who uh, in the neighborhood uh, that we really keep our discussion focused on in our deliberations on May 18th. So we're gonna do that because it's a complicated case and we're, we will, our hope is to get through our deliberation that evening as well. So seeing nothing else, uh, can we have a motion to adjourn? Commissioner Pittman moves and a second. Commissioner Calloway seconds. All right, would you please call the roll, Eileen? Commissioner Pittman? Yes. Commissioner Calloway? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Hoffman? Yes. Yes, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for another.